This is Eddie with another episode of Corn Fed Bushcraft. Today we're going to start a video. It's going to take uh, approximately 21 days to complete this video. We're going to incubate some eggs. I'm going to show you the process from start to finish. Uh, point out uh, key times to uh, do things such as candling and um, uh, important tips for you to remember. Uh, basically, we'll just walk you through the whole process of uh, hatching out some eggs. Alright, uh, the process of uh, hatching out eggs takes 21 days. Um, you know, you from the time you uh, put the eggs in, the time they hatch, is usually 21 days. Uh, my incubator runs a half a degree warmer most of the time than usual. So, uh, it usually, uh, mine start hatching on the 20th day or so. Um, most people, uh, put their eggs in, uh, nose down. I use a, uh, GQF hover baiter. And when I say nose down, I'm talking about the, uh, tapered end of the egg, uh, down in the egg turner. Which, uh, I'll show you all that here in a minute. Um. Another thing to remember is if you order eggs, you order eggs off the line or one of these uh, chicken farms or whatever, when you get your eggs in, let the eggs settle. Don't put them straight into the incubator. Let the eggs settle in the egg carton, nose down, for at least 24 hours. Uh, the eggs are good and fresh. You can, you, know, you can let them set for about three days. Inside that egg, there's an air sac, and... Uh, the uh, shipping kind of uh, distorts that air, kind of moves it around into smaller bubbles. And uh, by letting it settle, you allow that air to regather and reform one solid air sac in there. Uh, it uh, adds to a little bit higher hatch rate. Um, you also want to make sure your incubator has been running for, my, me personally, at least three days before you're ready to put those eggs in. So when you call, place your order, you know, and they're going to tell you it's going to take 72 hours to get them eggs to you. Go ahead and get that incubator up and running. Um, incubator, chicken eggs, 99.5 degrees, somewhere along in that ballpark. Uh, you can spare one or two to one degree up or one degree down. Um, it's all, that will affect your uh, hatch time. Uh, warmer it is, sooner they'll hatch. Cooler it is, later they'll hatch. Um, higher the humidity, softer the shell, the easier it's going to be for them to hatch. Uh, I run mine about 60-65% humidity. I'll show you the little gaz gadget, you know, gizmo, whatever you want to call it, I got in there that tells me all that. Um, hmm. But, uh, yeah, let me uh, get over there and I'll show you the incubator and uh, kind of walk you through a little bit of the different features. of. Alright, here we have my incubator. As you can see, my wife and uh, kids bought me this a uh, couple of years back. Uh, genius idea. Awesome gift. Probably the best one I've gotten in a while. Um, got the solid top window on this. Uh, awesome feature. Uh, you never have to open it to uh, check out your hatch rate. Um, let's see. Here's a little logo. Let me get out of the light there. Can't see that too well, but anyhow. That's just your uh, hover baiter information tells you where you can call them and get information about it. All right, let's see if you can look right back in there. All right, see that gizmo leaned up against the back wall there? That tells me the temperature to the nearest degree and the humidity inside my incubator. Top number there, 67% humidity, bottom's 100. This incubator is incredibly accurate on temperature. Uh, it's a forced air incubator. See if you can see the wire going in here. All right, that wire there is the egg turner. That's this yellow piece here with all the little holes in it. You got this wire here coming in, and this is for the thermostat, heating element, and fan. This is the fan right here. It sucks air in through this little hole. <coughs> um, then you have your uh, outlet here where the air comes back out. All right, let me turn this off a second. I'm gonna flip it up and show you what the inside and a few little features on the inside. All right, this little area here, that's your fan I was telling you about. It uh, Basically, it'll suck the uh, air up and move it around through the top over these little heating elements here. And uh, 
it evenly spaces the temperature in the incubator so that you don't have a hot spot right in the center and then your sides be off by a degree or two you know it's just you know it's to keep it well balanced and uh, allows you to work with a uh, lower heating uh, lower uh, temperature inside the incubator all right see this right here that is a chart that tells you uh, for what temperature you want to set the incubator it shows you which way to flip the switches inside of here are little switches and you just flip them up and down till you get the desired temperature you want and uh, mine set at 99.5 on the nose and this thing is never off by more than a half a degree it was an amazing find uh, my wife and kids bought it for me at a um, Craigslist site a couple of years back uh, this incubator used normally sets you back a hundred dollars this one was 50 off Craigslist I mean still of a deal alright let's move on here alright you can see the little gizmo there since I've had it open temperatures drop 99 humidity 55 um, egg turner uh, that's pretty much it for the inside we keep water there's a little plastic trough underneath that has water in it and um, that's what controls your adds humidity to the machine all right we are all loaded up uh, actually I probably I get away with putting half a dozen more eggs in here but I don't have them right now so we're gonna go with the even three dozen uh, this machine holds three and a half dozen eggs uh, you can see the, the brown ones back here these are all uh, for the most part um, Dominecker crosses um, for the most part all Dominecker but you never know when you got a bunch of free range chickens what's going to happen all right over here we have these blue greenish eggs most of them green which is you know one of my favorites you know i like the the, the more common is the blue out of the colored eggs around here but got a whole row of green ones even some of them like these here on this row right here are more of an olive color a lot of people call them olive eggers but uh you know they're just fancy americanas whatever you want to you know whatever you want to refer to them as everybody's got their own little name all right we got these white ones back here um, can't remember exactly what there is there ain't a whole lot of white breeds of chicken you know where chickens that lay white eggs around here uh, brown's more of a common color for us but uh, got them all in here all of them are nose down as I said earlier um, another thing I failed to mention earlier uh, do not ever let your incubator get above 105 degrees uh, I had a, that happen once on a, a little giant incubator uh, probably the worst incubator I've ever owned um, killed uh, an entire incubator full of eggs 70 something eggs I had laying in it I did not have a turner in that one but uh, 70 something eggs weren't um, due to faulty uh, setting on the incubator it had one of those twist knobs and those twist knobs are never accurate um, this one knock on wood I've ran it now for several years and never had a problem out of it um, seems to be a uh, excellent incubator all right a little further on we're gonna get into uh, candling process and um, talk about uh, when we pull the eggs out the turner out and leave them in there uh, still so they can hatch out uh, but for now um, it's a waiting game we put these in keep an eye on the incubator and uh, we wait until it's time to candle. All right, I want to take a brief second to point out one more thing. Uh, this right here, this goes on the wall. I usually put it above the incubator, so I'm constantly looking at it. This kind of a little makeshift calendar. This lets you know how long the eggs have been in uh, and when to do key things. If you notice, like uh, right here on the 14th. I've got that little uh, star looking thing there and that's to remind me to candle the eggs most people also do it on the seventh I don't bother um, it's hard to uh, really candle an egg good you know that early on in the process uh, let's see if you notice right there 19th I got a little symbol there that is to remind me to uh, remove the eggs from the egg turner and uh, leave them still for the following three days uh, gives you the dates you know all the good stuff you need the important things you need to remember when uh, 
incubating your eggs. Uh, it's a constant reminder every time you uh, look at your incubator right there hanging above it on the wall your records let you know how long they've been in there as you can see mine's up there been two days now we are uh, two days into this 21 day process all right everybody it's now day seven at this point you could candle if you wanted to uh, like I said I personally uh, don't candle till day 14 uh, day seven is just too hard to uh, get any kind of results but uh, just letting you know that at this point, if you felt necessary or felt the desire to do so, you could. Let's run down here and do a little quick check in here. We have um, 100 degrees and 55% humidity. Let's take a little glance over. You can see the turner working real good there. All right. I'll get back with you uh, probably on uh, day 14. All right, everybody. What you see before you uh, is a candle on device. This here's a homemade contraption. Uh, made it up myself. Just some uh, scrap plywood. Uh, inside of this is a um, light bulb, a little light socket in there off of a lamp, and a uh, energy efficient uh, swirly uh, fluorescent bulb. I use them. They have a really bright light, and uh, you know, for one, they conserve electricity, and uh, they don't get warm. So. Uh, let me show you the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. Uh, we had a few bad eggs, I'm sure. And um, I'm going to uh, show you what we got. Alright everybody, we got the egg. We put the nose of it down on top of the little candling device. And as you can see, it's been uh, 14 days. We can see through that egg. We can still see the yolk in that sucker. That, my friends, is a bad egg. Alright, let's remove this. Show you a good egg. Oh, pardon that light there, boy. It's bright. All right, let's set a good egg on there. What's that? Pitch black. Nothing. That means there's a bird in that egg, and he's taking up almost all the space in that egg. All right, there you have it. That's the difference in a good egg and a bad egg, and uh, what you should see at uh, the 14-day mark. All right, one more thing uh, I think I failed to mention so far is uh, never leave your incubator open for more than 30 minutes. When you're candling eggs, um, go there, be done, 30 minutes. Best results, candle uh, in a totally dark room. Um, and just remember, never leave that incubator open more than 30 minutes. All right. Um, didn't even realize the other day that I probably should have took a video when I was taking the eggs out and laying them in there flat, but... Uh, figure you can get the gist of it. Uh, you can see all the eggs laying down in there flat. Uh, we're in the last uh, three days of the uh, incubation process. Um, from here on out it's a sit and wait game. Uh, don't open the incubator. Don't touch the incubator. Wait till they all hatch out and we'll go from there. Alright everybody it's day 20. And we've got about eight of them pipping so far. And in case you're wondering what pipping is, I'll shine this light right there. See right there under the light on that particular one. Now when I go to move it away, you'll see a little white fleck there. That white fleck is actually a little micro spot right there where that egg is. Uh, I got a little shattered spot. That is the uh, chick's beak. And uh, we have multiple ones already pipping. So, um... Tomorrow night, we'll have, we'll have a uh, incubator full of chicks. All right, everybody. Day 21 is now complete, and as you can see, we have got them everywhere in there. Now, baby chick can go for three days without food or water, living off the nutrients that was in its egg. So um, we're gonna leave them in there a little bit longer, let them completely dry out, see if any more of them hatch because there's another egg right under there and that one's right behind it yeah see it right there yeah there's still a chick in there trying to come out there's still a couple of them I see so uh, we're going to leave them in there maybe the rest of the day and uh, see what we got uh, see what kind of pipping we still got going on if not we'll leave them in there a little bit longer but uh, as you can see we got an incubator full well, it's a little hard to see using a flashlight here but uh you get the just. There's a good looking little Americana. Little Dom Necker. But, uh, alright. There you have it. 
All right, everybody, we got them in a little temporary cardboard box with a little heat lamp up above here. Yeah, right there. I want to try and keep them pretty warm in here. I like to keep them about 90 degrees. Next week, bump them down to 85 and then 80 and so on, just by moving the lamp up a little higher each time. Uh, we got a um, chick uh, starter pellet, uh, starter crumbles right there. Can't find my chick waterer, so for now, I just got an ashtray. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, rocks in there. If you want to fill up the rocks a little above the level of the ashtray, keep them from uh, getting off in it and drowning. And if they get soaking wet, they can die real easy. But uh, it's just a little temporary setup until we can get them in the brooder. And uh, there you have it. Uh, 21 days, we got a whole box full of baby chicks.